Yes. If he reduced the impervious areas in any fashion, his fees would be less. Are you using the, the total building space that you have? I haven't as much in the last year or so. I, 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 my work has changed a little bit, and then there's enough stealing going on that, that I have trucks stolen from down there, and I've had some other stuff stolen, and most of it's junk that they're taking in. They go get a job and put as much effort into their jobs. They do steal, and they can make a good living. But but I haven't used it as much. The buildings that are there, I mean, are probably not coming down. There, there's three buildings there. There's, a, there's an office trailer in the long building where they used to run the livestock do, and then the other was the old horse farm. Um, but like I said, they're, they're probably not going to change. And the poor gal back here, that, that, that for her to go add that, those two parcels together and pay, she's going to pay probably $1,500 to get a surveyor come in. She's better off just to pay the, pay the money each month because it's going to be cheaper than paying a surveyor. Um, but well, I, I drive past your, your business quite often, and I didn't know what your business was or what you do. But I didn't know whether you used the total building. And if you didn't, that would have been one way to reduce. <coughs> well, I, I appreciate I appreciate you thinking of that and coming up with it. Um, like I said, the property doesn't get used near as much as it used to. I, I do excavating and, and that type of thing, drive a dump truck. I'll tear, look, the other day I tore semen out for a guy. It's too wet to get in somewhere else out in the, in the field in the holler to dump. So I stockpile it down there and then I haul down at a later time. It's, it's so convenient. I get, I get the dump truck trailer in the barn. It's convenient to have, but it, the, the more it goes, the more taxes I keep paying on, on everything. I begin to think that I ain't going to make enough money pay the taxes I have to pay to make a, you know, to make a living. It, it, it's one it's one and then another and another and another, whether it be on the city level, the county level, the state level, the federal level, it's gotta stop somewhere. I'm gonna ask your opinion of the gasoline. Of what? Of gasoline. Oh yeah, not real fond <laughs> of that either. Diesel fuel up over five dollars a gallon. Right. You know I, I, I think we got Republicans in command here. I think it's Democrats' fault, but that's a whole other story. So I just right. point to that point today on the way out. Thank you, Mr. Vanberg. Thank you. Does anybody else who's here have a challenge to the two things that this board can review? Yes, sir. Good evening, Lord. John Bomer is my name. I own property. Excuse me, John. Let me find your property okay. here. 1441 North Liberty Circle East out on Vandalia Road. I own two and a half acres there. And upon uh, buying that property, you'll see here in a minute, I had to also purchase about two and a half acres of a retention pond. This is appeal number 22-3. And upon purchasing that piece of property, I had to purchase a half acre of the retention pond. It does me no good. But I get to pay taxes on that retention pond. My building, as you can see, is to the right in the, in the robin colored area. All my water and all my roof water is in a tile that goes to that retention pond. All my water from my property goes west to that retention pond. I do not use, I have city water and I have uh, wastewater there. But if I understand this, this is for storm water. My storm water, I'm paying an assessment or a tax, a property tax to store my storm water. Plus, if you'll go out and drive by and look, I'm also taking the water off of Vandalia Road into my pond. So I don't know if I should <laughs> charge a fee for that because I'm paying tax and somebody's other water is coming into my taxable property. And I don't feel my assessment is fair because I don't use, mother my storm water is gonna go to Greensburg. It all runs west. Now I'm in the city limit. I agree. But I pay a property tax for my stormwater to go to the stay. Pond on that 
the green area. The green area is the retention pond. So just yeah. So all my, all my tax statement, I don't know what my rate is for that half acre, but I'm paying something. That already, is the pond. Already to absorb my stormwater. Now, if I get assessed this fee, to me, that looks like double taxation for something I'm not getting anything for. Can you fill it in? Well, I can fill this. No. No. Now that you're paying for a storm. The, the storm the stormwater fee is for the again the entire city it's a collection your water that will eventually leave that pond no it doesn't leave the pond it does yeah. not leave that pond the water actually comes in the pond here for sale there's no there is no is that where it goes? Is it it runs down that ditch to the west, and then goes into stormwater pipes. This, this, this here? No, 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 no. You have an overflow facility right here. Water comes in, goes down this ditch, enters into a storm sewer, and then it runs down Freedom Street all the way through storm, and gets put over here in the creek. So you use actually the it city goes storm into the all the way through here for overflow water that comes out right there. So the I get to pay the fee and pay the property. You have to take up the property tax assessment with the county auditor. So, and I, and I guess my, my question to you, sir, is do you agree that that is a commercial property? Well, yes. Okay. It's a commercial so then, property. So it's a commercial property, therefore it falls under class four. Do you have any disagreement with that? I don't know what class four is. Sir. Class four is a commercial property. Okay. With improvements. With improvements. Yes, it is. Okay. The other question is that the assessed, the, the, the measured value of that property is 13,650 square feet, which translates to 4.55 ERUs is the impervious area on that property. So that's the blacktop and the roof? I believe basically. so, yes, sir. So the, the second question I would have would be, do you have any evidence to support the fact that your impervious area is not 13,650 square feet? Well, I haven't measured it, but I know the building's 2,400 square feet. <clears throat> the two parking lots probably are about the same size. My, my suggestion would you be, sir, would be if you believe that your impervious area is less than 13,650 square feet, have someone who can define an impervious area. 13,000 what, sir? Uh, 13,650 square feet. And see if, see if the... Who do I contact to get that measured? I would guess a hydrological engineer. I, I, I have no idea. A surveyor might do it. I was going to say, that's, I suspect that there's a lot of people that are going to figure out who determines impervious areas in this city. What you're saying is impervious does not count lawn. Correct. It's just black top or roof. Yes, and I believe if you talk to, if you situation. Yeah. Right. If you schedule the time to, to speak with Ron, I'm certain that he can help work through with you what an impervious area is. So if you believe that that number is inaccurate, then come back with that with a number that is more accurate and, and evidence to support that. Should here? Mm -hmm. oh, another appeal. Yeah, it'd be, a, it'd be a second appeal. Because, because as it sits right now, your argument is not that it is not a class four building. And your argument, as it's presented, is not that it has 13,650 in purpose area. Your argument is, I also bought it with a pond, and the pond should have some impact on what my fee is. Right, and I, I understand what you're saying. Because I'm water there, then it doesn't get to the And I'll pay your tax to do So I think that would be worth a little bit. I would, unfortunately, it is not something that is modifiable in the current ordinance. So, but is this, I know this is being done all over the state. Yes. Yeah. And the reason this is being done, the way I understand it, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is so you can get government money to help <coughs> for the storm sewer, is that correct? Actually, it's so we can get money to take care of drainage problems in the city. But you gotta do this to get government money. Because the more you raise yourself, the more government money you get. Am I correct on that? That's what I've been told. I, I have no idea. I don't know of any. There's grants that you can get through 
the gov federal right. government, not state, federal government. And by, by doing this, because you can't get a grant that's great if the town don't have so much money already raised. Is that correct? I don't. I don't know of anything off the top of my head about that. Okay. The idea was that was presented last year during the summer and passed by the council was to raise funds to help facilitate the construction of better stormwater management citywide based on a 10-year-old study that didn't have anything done with it because there wasn't a funding stream. And so we've reassessed that, we've modernized the pricing, we set up a structure to help fund some of those projects locally. That is why it was established. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's important for the people of Greensburg to understand what, what where this money is, is going. It's going so we can address stormwater issues that the city of Greensburg has had for a while. And well, I know. Well, I know. You're right. We have to have the money to fix those and put infrastructure in. And neighborhood associations that own retention facilities pay taxes and pay the stormwater fee on that as well, and they collect the whole neighborhood water. You are not unique or alone, again, in that. Um, the ordinance is set up so that, I, and I'm not sure that it makes sense in your endeavor, but you could definitely chat with Ron about it, that if you improve your stormwater management, you know, make it bigger, hold more, um, less runoff, et cetera, then you can get credits. We approved one of those last month. Um, that can be done, but you'll have to chat with him about how to accomplish that. Well, I'm not one to make the pond any bigger. I don't want to do that. I wish it was on the wedding there. Look, and I have the land, not the water, but it's there. And we had to purchase it when we bought the land. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, so I'm Nancy Schroeder, and I'll tell you how, why I'm here is because we have farm ground that's in the city. The only reason it's in the city is because back when Honda come in, okay, in order to get a developer that would even look at you, <coughs> you had to be annexed in the city. We annexed in in 2009 because 2010 was the federal uh, assessment year or something. So our ground was actually annexed in in 2011. Your okay? Wolverton right. Farms. They actually we have no city utilities out there. All of our water goes down into soil into our crops you know so I'm wondering why we even have to pay their petitions 2022 35 2022-36 and 2022-37 and one is at the end of the driveway which is actually less than two tenths of an acre it come about like when they put the, I'm, I'm just guessing, because nobody actually knows, it come about when the um, RMC put electric poles between the two properties there. So there was like two tenths of an acre that actually has a parcel number that we're being assessed for. Mm -hmm. Two of those are being assessed as unimproved lots at the $1.16 month and then one is okay but you have no drains out there i was just making sure i'm, I'm looking at the right thing right ma'am may i ask you a couple of questions sure is your property located in the city limits well yeah we had to be annexed in okay do you contest or believe that your property is not unimproved property under class one of the ordinance two parcels are yeah, two, two parcels three. are and one is not do you, do you contest the classification at all of your property? No. Okay. Do you contest the assessment as far as the impervious area on your property? Do you believe that they have miscalculated in any way the amount of asphalt or gravel or rooftop or anything that falls under an impervious area? Do you believe that it is inaccurately calculated? I don't know how it's calculated, so I can't. Say one way or the other, how it's calculated. So you, you, as you stand today, you do not have any evidence to say that it is inaccurately calculated. I'm just saying I don't see why we should have to pay this when we don't even have any utility, city utilities at all. I, I, and I understand completely what you're saying, and that is something that you can certainly say to your elected official. 
to determine whether or not the ordinance or legislation should be changed. But it is not something that can be appealed to the Board of Works. Okay, the so Board of Works cannot change anything about the ordinance other than your class or the amount of impervious area that you have. So, so, in your you, so argument we would have to go to the board, the council. You would have to go to the saying. council, correct, and ask to have the ordinance changed. Okay, so to go to the council, do I have to write a letter to get on the agendas and all this stuff? Or? The, the best course of action for that is to reach out to your representative, who is Councilman Rick Emsweller, and your at-large representative is Councilman Daryl Poling. You would be best served to have conversations with them about your particular situation and ask them to investigate or look up what they believe the changes they would like to see. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Just to be clear, she would have calculated in previous area because it it's a resident. It's like a non class and one. I was trying to make the point. It, there's not, only two it, things you can look yeah. at. So if you're not talking about one of the two things. Okay. Excuse me. 